Hello everybody, I'm Danger Jen Vex and welcome to Either Or. So for this Friday I decided I wanted to do the Either Or instead of the press the button. But the concept is going to be exactly the same. I am going to look at the options. I am going to talk about the options slightly. You know, just, I don't know if you want to call it ranting or whatever. I'm just going to speak my mind about the topic. And then we're going to move right along to the next one. So, yeah, I mean, there's not much more to say other than let's get right into it um you should probably know just before we get started that it has been one hell of a day technically speaking aside from a couple of hours that i've crashed i haven't actually slept since wednesday wednesday right what is today what is today is today thursday or friday i haven't actually slept since tuesday it's thursday today it's thursday for me right now it is 5 a.m on thursday morning and i haven't slept since tuesday aside from crashing for about three hours last night um that's because that vlog that you guys got of me going on my little adventure kind of came out of nowhere so the hours that i would have used sleeping was hours spent out <laughs> Anyway, let's just get to what we're supposed to be doing and get to the questions. So the very first question uh, is watch your favorite movie on repeat for a full day or watch Nick and Nora's infinite playlist once. Now, I have this weird feeling that this answer is probably going to get me in a bit of hot water, but I have no idea who Nick and Nora is. So I have no idea what their infinite playlist is. However, I don't really want to look them up either. Because the other option is, watch your favorite movie on repeat all day. And believe it or not, some of my friends can attest to this. That is actually something I already do. I have certain movies that I can just put on in the background and I would go on to do whatever with this movie just playing in the background. Uh, some of my favorites to do that with are, um, well they're all kind of, of, of the older movies. So uh, Dreamcatcher is one of them. I love playing that on repeat for some reason. Um, the Jaws series, the Jurassic Park series, the Alien series, the Hellraiser series, the new and the old Trons. <laughs> so I actually quite frequently just put those on to play on repeat in the background. And, and I love my movies. I really do. I've always loved movies, along with games and writing, you know, games, books, writing and movies. Those are the things that I really, really love. And music. Music is life. <laughs> Coffee is life. Music is life. I have a lot of things that is life. <laughs> so this question, answering this question is really, really easy. I am going to watch my favorite movie on repeat for the whole day. And it seems that 77% of people agree with me. Well, why wouldn't you want to watch your favorite movie the whole day? It's your favorite movie for a reason. Be Batman or be Superman. Um, okay, so let me, I already know which one I'm going to pick and let me explain my reasoning for it to you. Superman is pretty cool, okay? And in many ways, he is one of my favorite superheroes. The reason for this is Superman doesn't don a suit to become a superhero. He was born a superhero. He is a superhero. He dons the mask to become human. He dons the, the, the disguise to become one of us. We are the disguise. Whereas, you know, but, but he's still cool. I mean, he's a, he's a pretty decent guy and he, he really is an awesome superhero. And yes, he's definitely one of my favorites, especially the Christopher Reeve version. Uh, only the first two movies, the third and the fourth ones kind of suck. <laughs> anyway, but if I had to pick, I, I would be Batman. Not for this or that, but 
Superman has this very, very strict moral code, which kind of makes him the Captain America of, of DC. He is very much a goody two-shoes. And I don't really see myself as, as a goody two-shoes type person or hero for that matter. Batman, however, while he also has very strict rules and, and a moral code, you know, like he, he doesn't want to kill and, and that sort of thing, there are other things that make him cool. You know, he is the Iron Man of the DC Universe. He's the rich, you know, intelligent uh, and, and slightly darker crime fighter, which appeals more to me. And, you know, besides having all that money to throw around when while you're not Batman, I wouldn't turn that down. Not at all. <laughs> so, would I rather be Batman or be Superman? The answer is very simple. I choose to be Batman. 54% of people actually choose Batman over Superman. And... I'm actually a little surprised by this, but I guess Batman has become like a meme just in his own existence. So why not? <laughs> okay, would I rather have a lisp or have a lazy eye? Um, I don't know. I, I know there's this thing you can do with the... I don't know if that works. <laughs> so would I rather have a lisp or have a lazy eye? That, that's a bit tougher. Um... I guess both kind of suck. Um, they're not, you know, they're, they're not the kind of disabilities that will completely ruin your life. Um, also depending on your outlook, of course. And I've known people who have had lisps and, you know, with, with training and, and dedication, they've managed to, you know, improve their speech, you know, get them get over their speech impediment. Um, Whereas having a lazy eye, that's not something you can work to fix. That is unfortunately, you know, there's muscle problems and, and that sort of thing. Unless there's a way to fix it and I just don't know about it, you know, surgery of some kind. But at this point, I don't know of a way to fix a lazy eye. I know you can work on your speech to improve your speech. I don't think you can do that with an eye. Now, I'm not saying that I'm just going to pick because I want to get out of the one or the other. But having a lisp appeals to me on a different level over having a lazy eye. Um, while Steve Buscemi looks great as crazy eyes, um, <laughs> I there's something humorous about having a lisp. And you can actually make it work to your advantage. Um, I mean, hell, some comedians um, specifically try and learn how to lisp properly so that they can turn it into comedy um, and you know it has potential so would I rather have a lisp or have a lazy eye I would rather have a lisp and 65% of people agree with me okay so would I rather only wear revealing hot pink clothes or always have to wear socks and sandals this is a little difficult for me if they had said anything else on the blue i would have picked the blue right off the bat over wearing socks and sandals because socks and sandals you know um uh, yeah. Look, if you like wearing socks and sandals, you know, that's good for you. But it's not my thing. I don't like wearing socks with sandals. And it hurts. It's really uncomfortable. I don't care who of you says it's comfortable. <laughs> for me, it's just extremely uncomfortable and I don't like it. And I have tried it. So I can say that I don't like it. But the problem with the alternative, I mean, if I had to wear revealing clothes to avoid socks and sandals i might still have said yes the problem is the hot pink now before you get started on you know oh but your hair looks pink and you know this and that no i originally colored my hair purple okay and i've it's only because i haven't been able to re-dye it 
that it's this pinkish reddish color now um, the first chance or the first opportunity I get I will probably redye it straight back to purple because purple <laughs> but unlike most girls I'm not such a major fan of pink in fact I kind of specifically dislike pink especially hot pink and pastel you know that baby powderish pinkish color no so oh I don't know I don't know frack I mean oh this isn't supposed to be this difficult I would rather wear I would rather wear socks and sandals than wear revealing pink clothes I'm sorry but I draw the line at revealing pink clothes hot pink clothes and 53% of people actually agree with me I'm going to reach out and thank the male population out there for probably avoiding all the revealing hot pink clothes and making me you know not feel bad about picking socks and sandals so would you rather fall two stories onto concrete or fall two stories into freezing water either way this isn't very good um, because water is when you hit water at high velocity it's pretty much like hitting concrete um, the question is how long would I have to spend in the water can can I like just drop in and then immediately climb out if I can do that then this is a relatively easy choice because water is still kind of semi-solid and the freezing is definitely not all that appealing but I've always you know I, I like for all that I complain about the cold I actually don't mind swimming in cold water and I, I think I might be able to handle freezing for a little bit so on the flip side you know there's the concrete it's solid it's hard there's no getting around that if you fall onto that from two stories up you're gonna break something there's there's no getting around that unless you are indestructible you are gonna injure yourself dropping two stories onto concrete so I think I could deal with the freezing water for a small period of time and I would say I would rather fall two stories into freezing water than onto concrete logical it's logical Spock it's logical <laughs> so we're falling into freezing water and 82% of people agree with me in any given situation would I rather be the first to die or the last to die well obviously they're not giving me a choice of surviving <laughs> I either have to die first or I have to die last and I know I, I mean just the other day I said very loudly that I would outlive you all and I stand by that but if I have no choice if I knew that I was in a situation and I'm imagining you know kind of like horror cliche horror type things now so you know we are gonna all die horrible deaths am I gonna die first or am I gonna die last and in that kind of situation, in that kind of horror situation and cheesy uh, slasher movie situation, I would like to be the first to go. Um, and the reason for that is I would rather just die and get it over with than deal with all that crap. And in fact, in any situation where um, there's something horrific involved, I would choose to die first. Um, my reasoning for that is okay we're gonna we're gonna tell it a little bit of a story I lost grandmother and great-grandmother and you know cancer has been quite the killer in our family and I lost an aunt to Alzheimer's so I've seen how they waste away and how they suffer and how it just gets worse and worse and worse and I've always told my family I know they don't really agree with this but I've always told them that if I ever get diagnosed with any kind of disease that's going to prevent me from 
being my independent self, you know, that's going to make it impossible for me to care for myself. Uh, I don't want to be a burden on them. And I don't care if they say yes, but your family, it's not this, you're, you're a burden. Okay. Even if they say that they don't mind taking care of you or this or that, to some extent, you're a burden. You take up their time. You don't, you're, or you're not able to contribute financially, you know, and then worse than that, they've got to watch you, you know, forgetting everything and losing your mind or wasting away and starving. And I just absolutely refuse to put my family through that. So I've always said that if I ever get diagnosed with anything like that, I'm finding a really tall building and I am taking a headfirst swan dive off the top. Um, call me selfish if you want, but I'm not putting the people around me through that because I remember I have the last image of my grandmother on her deathbed the night that she died, seared into my mind forever. And no matter how I try to remember her, that image is always there. And I'm not going to le let it ever reach that kind of point with me. I want my family to remember me the way I am now lively and loud and happy and opinionated that is who I am and that's who I want people to remember me as I don't want to be the lost image of me to be a skeleton somewhere um so basically that's it if if it's any kind of situation like that I would rather be the first to die or just to die period but if it's just life, normal life, like it is now, and you know, I probably will inevitably die, then, you know, everybody dies at some point. So I, in those kinds of cases, I would rather be the last to die. You know, I want to see the world as it develops and changes and I want to see where technology goes and what the future holds. I want to live as long as I possibly can. Um, so I should probably start thinking about changing a few things in my life to achieve that goal. <laughs> Regardless, in, in an, any kind of normal situation, I would rather be the last to die. So the question is, be the first to be the last. Be the first in any kind of horrible situation. Be the last in normal life. Now they said in any given situation, which means I have to take into account, I can't say I'll take this one for those situations and this one's for that situation. I have to pick them all. And they said in any given situation, which means in that kind of horrific situations as well. And having to take that into account, I'm going to say I'd rather be the first to die. And for this specific one, I'm actually curious, I'm going to do a few more. But for this specific one, I think I'd like to know what your thoughts are on this one. So leave those for me down in the comments below. Please and thank you. 43% of people agree with me. Whereas 57% of people would rather be the last to die. And that's understandable. I can actually get that. Um, it's, you know, not everybody is deliberately trying to put as much thought into this as I am. <laughs> would you rather have a drunk personal driver or have a thieving maid or nanny? Um, actually, you know what? This isn't a very difficult decision because... Having a drunk personal driver in a country like South Africa, where 99% of, of people uh, drive like morons and where, you know, like 90% of that 99% are taxi drivers, you know, having a drunk personal driver is a one-way ticket to getting myself killed. The drivers, the people on the roads are, are insane. They're crazy. Okay, they're nuts. So I need, if I have a personal driver, I need it to be somebody who's focused on the road and focused on what they're doing and definitely not drunk. Whereas having a thieving maid or nanny, had them twice. 
you catch them, you fire them, you move on. It's life. So this one's pretty simple, which is good after my long rant, rant <laughs> for the previous one. So I'm definitely going to say I'd rather have a thieving maid or nanny than a personal drunk driver here in my personal situation. And 53% of people agree with me. Don't you guys read public messages? Drunk driving kills. Drinking and driving kills. Don't bloody well drink and drive. Okay? Thank you. Would you rather be extremely paranoid or extremely naive? This is a tricky one. I mean, let's look at them kind of objectively. If you are extremely paranoid, then you probably think constantly that, oh God, this is going to happen to me if I do this. You know, this person is out to get me. This is going to go wrong. It's an extremely negative way to live. Whereas being extremely naive, you have a lot of misconceptions about the world and how the world works. The thing is, when you are that negative and that paranoid, the chances of you being able to change your life into something more positive is, it's very small. You know, being extremely paranoid, you don't even look for the positive things in life. You don't even, you don't want to see them. It can hit you in the face and you'd be looking for what's wrong with it. Whereas when you're extremely naive on, on, you know, on the more positive end of being naive because that can also land you in a lot of hot water you know just trusting everyone and going everywhere and walking around the middle of Santon or Johannesburg in midnight and getting your ass stabbed but there's something a bit more positive about being naive and if you don't get yourself killed you can still learn you know some realities of the world and become a little less naive but you'd at least retain a little bit, unless you are irreparably damaged, you're at you'd at least retain some of that positivity. So I would rather have the opportunity to, you know, kind of normalize, but with that positivity, rather than being stuck with that kind of terrible uh, negativity. So I'm going to go, I would rather be extremely naive. 48% of people would rather be paranoid and 52% of people would rather be naive. Good for you. Always look on the bright side of life. <laughs> okay, last question. Would you rather have high motor functions but have very poor senses or have superb senses but low functioning motor skills? Wow, this is another, this is another tough one. Because having very high motor functions, that, that's what you need if you want to be like a dancer, which I, I kind of love, actually. I, I was trained to be a, a Latin American and a ballroom dancer. Um, you know, so you'd be good at sports and dancing and physical activities. Um, would You'd be good at those. But your taste, your smell, your sight, your hearing, those would be dulled. So basically your average jock then. <laughs> Forget I said that. I didn't say that. <laughs> Shit. Anyway, um, as opposed to having really superb senses, you know, hearing the crickets, you know, from down the road all the way or smelling what the people two blocks over are having for dinner <laughs> but having low functioning motor skills and here's the flip side of it low functioning motor skills aren't just you know it's not just being bad at sports or being bad at physical activities um, having low functioning motor skills have a lot of other kind of impacts on your life especially for younger children they have difficulty learning how to walk they have difficulty you know writing legibly so there are a lot of things connected to that however i am actually i do have a couple of very highly developed senses um my eyesight obviously isn't the best 
but I'd like to think that I have very good hearing and I I love food you know and and tasting different things and different flavors so uh, you know not having uh, you know t- functioning properly functioning taste buds would really really suck and you know I have a, I have a pretty decent sense of smell as well so would I be willing to give up those senses to have better motor functions and honestly I would I wouldn't you know just thinking that I wouldn't be able to appreciate a good cup of coffee or a juicy steak you know or be able to smell the rain and oh, that, that's one thing here after the rain everything just smells so clean and fresh and wonderful to lose those things just so that I could be better at things uh, you know at sports and stuff that I don't actually enjoy that is not that I can't give up my senses in that way (laughs) maybe that's just me but I can't so let's see 48% of people would rather have the motor functions of poor senses, and 52% of people agree with moi. (laughs) But I'm going to leave this episode here. I think that's all the time we have for uh, Would You Rather today. But, you know, that was fun. That was really fun. I enjoyed that. I, I did enjoy that. I'm sorry for the little turn it took in the middle, but we had a real discussion, you know. We, we covered a couple of things. Remember, you know, think about your answers and, and leave them for me in the comments. I'd like to know what you guys think. Also remember that Sunday is Q&A day, so if you've got questions or comments that you'd like me to read, just put them down below so that I can have them um, for Sunday. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, remember to hit the like button down below. And yeah, I will see you in the next video. Bye.